What's up, everybody? It's your boy Temple Dior, and you're tuned in to Oxen Brand Music. I tell people all the time why, like, I'm not in a rush just to get a girlfriend because my mom prepared me to get a wife. Woo! You know what I'm saying? If we're honest, a lot of us are really afraid to do things, and just out of our fear, we not only forget God's promises, but then we also yeah. forget. I try to opt a lot of things that you know the church don't want to talk about. Oh, uh, like what? Like what? Like what? What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Like, I mean, honestly, it's like so good to have you back on the show, looking nice and clean and sharp, bro. <laughs> it's good to be back. It's good to be seen, man. It's good to be yeah. seen. Yeah, you've been doing a. Are, are you doing any kind of streams and stuff like that? Is that what what's set up? Uh, I like, always kind of like streamed on the game. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I play. I play on the PS Five, but I've been kind of trying to get it right for like the podcast and just like when I record my content. Yeah. Um, but I haven't been streaming as much as I want to. I don't have as much time as I like. Hey, you know, but 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 is it like a a good? I don't have a lot of time. Like you got other things going on. Or is it yeah, like? Yeah, it's it's a good. I don't have a lot of time. It's a okay, good. okay, good, good. Yeah, then we go. Gonna we be. gonna get into that because we want to get caught up, bro. We want to get caught up. So, um, uh, he got his own podcast. Um, oh, never mind. Nisha, Nisha, just give me a hard time. All right, I'm gonna catch up on it later. I'm gonna catch up on it later. So, um, all right, bro. Well, hey, listen. Uh, for those of you guys uh, who do not know who Temple Dior is, uh, could you not only inform them, but could you remind everybody else a little bit about yourself, bro? Oh, what's up, everybody? My name is Temple Dior. Um, I'm located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm a Christian artist um, and influencer. I'd rather say Christian influencer and artist. Um, I'm currently in my senior year in college, Oklahoma State University. I'll be graduating in December. Hey, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, uh, big on. moves right there. Uh, I attend Rainbow Bible Church, if anybody knows what it is, in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Pastor Kenneth Hagan. Um, yeah. And you know, I'm just a man out the guy's own heart, just trying to share that love with everybody I meet. Hey, that's what's up, bro. That is what is up. Uh, it's it's good to to be able to just. I mean, I always enjoy having people back on the show, but when when we have people back on the show and so much life has happened, because it's been some time, bro. It's been some time since we been together, and so uh, I, I'm always excited because I'm like, oh, that means. That means God's been doing something, right? It wasn't just that one time on the show. There's been a lot going on, bro. Exactly. So, so uh, for for those of you guys uh, who do not know, we've already chopped it up. Uh, you know, we, we talked about last time you being a PK, uh, talking about church hurt and all that stuff. Uh, so there, there's so much that we got we talked about. Uh, but I want to go ahead and pick up uh, just where you are now, bro. I mean, currently. So so for those of you guys who were in the stream last time, uh, the homie had his parents in the background which i thought was great that was the first time we yeah. had special guest on special guest on special guest so <laughs> yeah so i loved it bro i loved it so uh so uh you, you told me off air that you that you moved out how has that transition been uh you know it's been a it's been a growing process yeah. um you know just another level of responsibility and intentionality mm. um you know, even living at home, you know, my parents always raised me to be responsible. Yeah. Stand, you know, my dad's favorite saying is, um, you know, they stack they stack tubs in a warehouse on top of each other, but at some point every tub has to sit on its own bottom. Ooh. So like, you know, everybody has to learn how to stand alone. Come on, pops. Um, Come on, pops. Yeah, yeah. It's super dope, bro. I, I spit that one out like in a heartbeat anytime I'm talking to somebody. Hey. But just being able to know that like it's just one thing like to go out and get it and know you're in the comfort of your home yeah but then to go out and get it and know like i gotta go get this because yes. the rents do you know a car note do insurance you know i gotta go get this and still not lose sight of what your actual dream is um i'll never forget we went to manpower one year and uh miles monroe rest in peace mm -hmm. he said there's a difference between your job and your work mm -hmm. Your mm -hmm. job is your nine to five. You clock in, clock out. Your work is what God has already purposed inside of you, whether or not you have a job, whatever your job may be. Yeah. That job is a source to fuel that work. Yeah. At the end of the day, your work is what God has called to last. You know, Ooh. that job is temporary. You can get fired in a heartbeat, whether or not you did something wrong. Ooh. Um, That's true. So, that's true. Like, really learning how not to burn myself out. Wow. You know, with my job and school. 
keeping mm-hmm. those, you know, priorities and being diligent in them, but not to the point that I'm sacrificing the work God has called me to. Mm. So, uh, so I want to slow down. I want to slow down real quick. So, yeah. um, I, I want to first hit on because uh, everybody's on different walks of life, but everyone yeah. at some point has had to go from uh, uh, my, you know, my my parents helped me out, right? I had support. I was I was in a system that yeah. uh, I didn't understand how much covering I had until I got outside of yeah. that covering. I want to unp- unpack that a little bit more, bro. Um, how how has your faith been uh tested refined uh um just how is it how has that experience been in your faith where going from with your parents to all the different uh not not struggles but the new challenges the new opportunities of growth uh that you're going through how has that how has that been different in, in terms of how your faith is related to that um i think it's really enlightened the perspective of how god operates um as a kid, I would say, you know, my mom used to say, I used to have crazy faith, you know. I was a kid at the beginning of a basketball season. We played the first tournament. I told my coach, I said, we're going to win a national championship this year, hey. my freshman year. Hey. And we went on to win every tournament and won a national championship. Let's and go. We didn't, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't have the pieces. We didn't have a team. But we had a lot of faith and a lot of hard work. And we had the right attitude. Yeah. Um, I love it. But, like, being out on my own has kind of put in perspective – how God operates in your life. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of people don't look at like, you know, the natural principles of, you know, God being a father. Yeah. And like right. a true father in the house should represent that earthly representation. Yes. Um, you know, even though I don't live with my dad, if I'm down and out, I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna pay this bill tomorrow. Can we figure something out? Like <laughs> he's there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. like being man enough. See, people think you being a man is like, I'm going to go figure it out and do whatever it takes to get there. And like, yeah, I will sit here and exhaust every option I have. Right. But at the end of the day, I can't be too proud of it. Like, yeah, you know, I stepped out. Um, you know, I don't know how this going to come about. I don't yeah. know if I'm going to make ends meet today. Can you help me out? And then, you know, I get you back. Or if I didn't go to work with you, yeah, you know, yeah. and you figure out a way. But like, right. that's the type of thing. And, you know, not everybody has that. And like, but you know, some people abuse that, you know, they ain't trying to figure out a way. It's yeah. like, I know my dad got me, you know? And so like, it's kind of put in perspective all that. Um, and I feel, I can say my faith has got tested at times. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, my job don't pay me enough money. I'm not making enough bread. Right, I'm trying right. to get this other stuff off the ground. I'm like, oh, this is just, I was like, man, you know, I moved out the house too soon. Like all this stuff goes through yeah. your head. You just got to sit down and put everything in perspective. And then you learn how much you live above your means when you're living at home. Mm, you know, you yes. Know, simple things like eating out all the time. Yes. You know, always going to hang out with your friends, you know, just hitting the road whenever and that, you know, not really like you pay putting gas in the car, but you're like, you know, I, I'm just, I got to go these places anyway. Now it's right. a lot of places you don't got to go. You well, know? And, and that's, and, and so, and that's the thing, bro. And, and you're hitting on it is the, um, again, not understanding how much covering you had right because yeah. it it is totally different like you said it it is totally different to know that all of the burden is on you and yes i agree especially if you still live within you know parameters of your family there still might be help and yes some people do use it um uh in an unjust way i guess you know is one way to do it yeah but the and what I love about what you said there is because I'm I'm directly relating it to uh, with God. Like I I don't understand how much covering I've had until somehow mm-hmm. if if I'm allowed to hear somebody talks about like yeah you know uh, 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 originally I had this plan. Um, but I felt like I wasn't supposed to do it, and then it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that didn't happen because had I have done that or had I've accepted that uh, opportunity or whatever, it would have been all shut down. I mean, just kind of even me joking around at the beginning of the stream about you know talk about potentially moving to Michigan, and then had I have done yeah. that, it would have been like, oh wait, all the opportunity I thought was going to happen is all gone, and it's only a year. <laughs> you know, that's so so with the so with the covering, okay. Um, what do you say to those who are closer to where you are right now where maybe maybe 
they they aren't sure if they can even do things on their own because they don't feel like they even have the support. Because I know you, I know you've got great support, but even right. from last time having mom mom and pops in the, in the back, um, they're not trying to hold your hand either, bro. So what what kind of encouragement yeah. would you have for somebody like that? Um, honestly, you gotta surround yourself with people that um are going to challenge you to stand on your own two feet. Yes. Um, and that's all my parents have ever done. And that's yeah. all they've ever prepared me for. You know, I tell people all the time why like I'm not in a rush just to get a girlfriend because my mom prepared me to get a wife. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Oh, hang uh, on. Do, do, like, say that again. Say that one more time. Say that one more time. <laughs> I'm not in a rush to get a girlfriend because my mom prepared me to get a wife. Mm, um, you know, come on. And, like, you know, my my dad prepared me to provide for a family, you know. And so that's like my mentality is those type of things. Yeah. And yeah. like, that's not, and the thing is like saying that's your mentality doesn't mean that you get everything right the first try. That's right. You know, it's that's Charles. Right. I'm like, bro, I know I shouldn't have spent that money on that. Man, I could have ate at the house. I didn't need to eat out, you know. Yes. Even though I'm trying to think, you know, better yes. financially and futuristically, it's still those times those things happen. Yep. Um, the biggest thing is having the right support system when you leave the house or right. you step out on your own. Because, yes, you know, some people may always have their family. Some people may not have the best family or home life. Yes. But in life, you will build another family. Ooh, and that okay. family you build is up to you. You know? Yeah. Oh, bro. Oh, bro. Yes. What the one, two. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's a one, two, bro. Not only, hey, are you, you are of a person who is a hope of, hey, listen, even if the, even if your environment, okay, is not one of which that you can flourish in, God, yeah. if you, if you put your trust in the Lord, if you allow yourself to actually, can you still see me? Uh, oh, no, I cannot. I can't, I can't see you. I can hear you though. Um, uh, but you gotta. I don't know, I don't know either. I my camera turned off. Oh, there, oh, there you are. Now. There we are. We back. We back in this. But you know, but it, it's it's uh, the understanding of if you lay your life down before the Lord, right? If you surrender your life, God has got you. Now, for those who have not come to that, um, it's not that it's not that I can't be hopeful. All right, that that God can still uh, work ways. Uh, for you uh, to be able to have the community or whatever it is that you need, right? But for those, and talking to the believers right now, if you truly lay your life down before the Lord and give it to Him and trust in Him, even if your environment has not been a great one, is exactly what Dior just said is, but there's going to be a community it that will be mm -hmm. provided, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, I love that, bro, because not... because. If we're honest, a lot of us are really afraid to do things, and just out of our fear, we not only um, we not only forget God's promises, right? But then we also yeah. forget everything God has done for us in past. Exactly. Yeah. And we we put this we put these handcuffs on him, like he can't do it again, yes. or he can't do something new. Oh, you know. And that's so that's the problem. You you start holding God back because like he can only act in your life as much as you want him to. Oh. You know, because if he did anything more than that, he would be going against his word, which he says I give you free will. So if I start yes. dictating and just doing everything in your life, I'm no longer giving you free will. I'm taking over, I'm controlling, I'm directing. You know what I'm saying? Yes. The whole thing is yes, I'm here to lead you, but I only lead you if you follow. And bro, so, bro, oh, oh, come oh, on now, doing it come on, so that's, that's okay. Whole, yeah, that's the whole thing. Is like, yeah. Let's see. I don't know if my camera's turning. There it is. It's back on again. But uh, I think it's turning off again. But that's the whole thing. That's yeah. the whole game plan. Is like understanding that. Yeah. Um, and walking in that is the key factor, honestly. Yeah. Ah, bro. That's so good, man. Uh, that's so good. I know we're having issues. I know we're having some technical difficulties right now, but, um, uh, man, yeah. What Jeffrey said, man, you drop, you dropping gems. Cause, uh, that's woo. So, okay. Here's the thing though. Again, I got to go back to it. You are where you are in that thought process 
because not only have you trusted in the Lord, but you have tried his trust. And, and I don't mean a neg- in a yeah. negative way, right? Uh, uh, God does want us to test him, okay? But we got to do it within right. the parameters that Scripture has laid out for us. And he wants us to test our faith in him by walking things out, right? Walking it yeah. out. Get get up on that water, right? Everybody always wants to talk about get on that water, right? You want to you know, walk on water and trust in God and all that. Like, but it's true. It is harder to build your faith up if you have never put yourself in a situation where you had to rely on God, right? And, and not, and obviously, okay, let's, let's, don't, don't be stupid, people, okay? Don't be like, yeah. God, I'm going to quit my job because I want to trust in you because you're the provider. And God like, yo, hang on now. I provided that job. Why the heck are you, yeah, hang exactly. on. <laughs> you know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. So, yeah, bro. I love that. I love that. I am getting hype. I am getting hype, Nisha. Cause listen, I get I, I get excited. I get excited because truth truth just makes me happy, bro. Okay? Yeah. Truth just makes me okay. happy. And in a world of which that we trying to pretend like we don't know what's true, we making up everything that's mm. true. To hear someone else have that mindset, I get excited because I feel like, and this is why we're supposed to be in community right with one another uh i feel like what happens is the flame that that i have the flame that you have right and all that um we end up getting to a point where uh whoa we got a lot going on here do we disconnect yo put some fire emotes uh or emojis in the chat if you guys are excited and uh as as i am cuz i am i was talking about fire here in a second but I might have to uh I might have to double check and see what's going on because <laughs> somehow there's two of me and then they got they got this mirror thing going on. So uh give give me a second. This is how you know is the show is live. This is how you know the show is live. Uh hey, what up? Uh what up, Mariano? Man, I was just about to call you your dad's name again. Although, uh Mariano, can you tell me, bro? Um Somebody tell, told me at the wedding that you actually prefer to be called Mar, uh, Mario, but nobody ever calls you Mario. Is that true? Is that true? Yeah. I knew a form of Twitch and glitch. Let me, let me fix this so we can get our guests going. back on. All right. Let's see. Let's see if it's on our end. Hang on. I've not, uh, I've not had this before. So we'll go. Boop. So we can get this back. All right. All right, well, welcome back. Welcome back. We got it all figured out, figured out nice and quick. Uh, no, nah, I wasn't breaking anything. Actually, for once, I was like, yo, it wasn't me. <laughs> no, that was all me on that one. Yeah, man. So, okay, so we were talking about uh, just basically testing God and uh, just seeing uh, how true he can be, man, how true he can be. So uh, so let's, uh, let, let's continue on the conversation. So uh, as far as what uh what else what what else do you got going on right now what, what's the lord doing with you right now bro because we, we've been talking about the beginning part if you guys just tuned in what up charlie wash um you can definitely run it back later but uh i, I want to know just keep 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 updating us what god is working through you right now man um you know right now it's like finishing up school um literally six classes left and i'll be done in december um so mm. guys really just just staying true to that despite everything that's kind of tried to deter me from finishing that. Yeah. Um, you know, just staying true to that for myself, for my parents, for my, you know, future kids. Um, not saying like that everybody has to go to college, but, uh, you know, I always feel like in life, if you start something that you're truly passionate about, you should always strive to finish it. Um, yeah. So like holding it to that, um, right now, um, the, the influencer side of things has really been taking off for me uh, on Instagram, um, TikTok, YouTube, all that type of stuff. So really kind of honing in Dope. on being an influencer first rather than an artist. Because at okay. the end of the day, my whole goal is to influence people with the love of Christ. Yeah, um, and music is just a vehicle to do that. So, so when you're talking about influence, you're, you're, uh, you're are we talking about like? uh product showing talk about bible scripture like like what how are you using that so um so pretty much i do a lot of like 
different type of content on like mm-hmm. TikTok, Instagram. Yeah. Um, originally, my TikTok was going off a lot quicker than everything else. Um, I got locked out of that one about 16K, had to start over. Um, but the Instagram has really been blowing up here recently. Um, and really just been engaging with a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of in turn helped my music push. So, like, you know, I do funny content. Um, right. Everything's kind of just like, from a Christian perspective, Christian inspired. Yeah. Um, one of my like most recent ones is uh, probably just popped up most recent is like I, I did a post and it's like I was spinning around the room, I just closed. I was like ignoring yeah. her text because just because she thought she was going, she went to church with me, she's gonna get to know me biblically, you know. <laughs> and, and so like stuff like that, just like <laughs> taking those things and just like putting you know real truth on there. Yeah. Um, so I, okay. I try to offer a lot of things that. You know, the church don't want to talk about. Oh, like uh, what? Like what? Like what? What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Like, I mean, honestly, it's like, really, what is the what is the biggest and hardest part of Christian dating? And that's sexual immorality. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, and and, and you, don't, you don't feel like the church talks about it? Or or you just talk, like, they only talk like one like dimension? It's not uh, talked about enough. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I talked about enough in a way of, you know, why is it wrong? You know what I'm saying? What mm. is the repercussions of it? You yeah. know, it's kind of like, I feel like it's kind of brushes one of the things. It's a sin, it's a sin. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. But like, there's a lot of things that it's a sin, it's a sin, but because we haven't convinced ourselves why we right. shouldn't be doing it, we can, it's easier to convince ourselves why we can do it and get away with it. Ah, uh, ooh. And so okay. I feel like that's the, the biggest thing. So so okay so, let's say uh, so let's we'll go we'll go ahead and talk to, uh, we'll talk we'll talk about that real quick. So, other than being told, hey, don't do that. It's wrong. Um, how how else how else have you uh, have you feel like God's kind of speaking to you about how to articulate why someone should not uh why why we should flee uh sexual immorality i mean obviously yes the scripture says it but again right. somebody just telling you hey don't do that that's bad it doesn't really it doesn't go that much further right there aren't that many people who are like okay yes sir yes you know a lot of times it's more like well why is it bad <laughs> you know what exactly. I mean? like- <laughs> exactly um and so like you know key for me is you know Honestly, is the the concept of what you're partaking in, and I feel like people don't understand the weight of it, mm. and the whole point of like what it is to strive to save yourself for marriage. Yeah, and, and you know, to get you know, and we be honest to get there on your wedding day, you know, and to com- commence it, and then you're sitting there thinking about all these other women you slept with. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and you can't present yourself pure to your wife. And yes, you know, at the end of the day. There's a difference between, you know, yes, you fell short and you turned away from it. And yeah. he's saying, you know, that was my attention. I did fall short, but yeah. I'm here now and I'm presenting myself clean to you now as in that regard. But yeah. some people don't even think about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then think about also think about the fact that the seed that you're planting for your future daughter, you know what I'm saying? Right. Or even a future niece, you right. know what I'm saying? Like, and how that when you think about it, that's all you, because a lot of people out here are just having sex left and right, and that's all they think about a person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just that physical connection. You know what I'm saying? It's just another body. Yeah. And you, you're you really demoralizing that person, you mm. know, and it's women and men included. You know, it's two sides of the spectrum, and yep. people don't want to look at that. Um, and going off with no regard. Yeah. But you're making those connections with those spirits and all that type of stuff, just continually amplifying the lust and the thing is, lust is one of the biggest killers of Christian and your morals because, you know, yeah. it, lust is not just about thinking somebody look good and wanting to sleep with them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Lust is the same thing. It's turning into greed, lusting after money, lusting after being rich, lusting and coveting after something that someone else has. Now you're trying to figure out, well, how do I go get that? How do yeah, I get that? it's it's, it's the consumption. Yeah, yeah. You start... You start uh... When it starts to consume you, so like talking about just what you just kind of that that thought process, like just because you, just because you see somebody and they look good, because listen, 
God made some really good looking people. Okay. All right. Speaking as a married man, my, my wife is gorgeous. Okay. All right. She's sexy. All right. Uh, and yes, my son is producing this show, so he hears it too. This, all right? this ain't the first time you heard me say it. So she's sexy, okay? And and ain't nobody going to be like her, okay? So so even if somebody gets my eye, you ain't going to make me go nowhere, okay? Let's just, let's just say that right off jump, right? And, and I'm still very aware of how really pretty some other people are, right? Like it's just, so, so the, the, the noticing somebody's hot is not is not the problem, right? Even even the uh, and, and you push back if you want. I don't think the initial desire of like, ooh, I kind of I kind of want her to talk to me, right? I want her to smile at me. I don't even think that's bad. I think it's when you consume that thought and you're like, ooh, how can I run into them one more time, right? How can I? And that, that's for me as a married man. So I, obviously, as a, as a single man, it's a little bit different. But then it's the it's the oh, how can I see her in this, or how can I see them in that, and how can I, you know, and put, letting that thought consume you and yes. run off into something else. Yep. And that's the thing is like the other thing is just how to, and that's with anything, is it guarding yourself, mm. and like you know, and that's the thing is like. There's so many different temptations out there. Yep. And you know where more of them temptations are at. You know, so just on a daily basis, you know where you're more tempted at. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. And the thing is, you may find yourself, I right, well, I'm I'm most tempted when I go to the gym, you know. Mm-hmm. And and now we gotta be honest, like you know the times that you know you're most tempted at, and you know when the time the gym is dead. Everybody knows when the gym is busy, everybody right. knows when the gym is right, dead. Right, right, right. Any real person that want to get a good workout at does not want to go when the gym is busy. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But a person is like, yeah, I want to get a workout in, but you know what I'm saying? I, I want to look at the personnel is going to go to the gym when they're busy. Yep. You know? And so that's the thing is don't walk in and set yourself up for temptation, you know? Yeah. And it's like, it's not saying that you're weak, but, you know, in real talk, you might be too weak just to go in there and focus. <laughs> that might be true. Yourself, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And so, yeah. like, you have to sit there and hold yourself accountable to do that. Um, and that's like, you know, people that don't, don't look at that type of stuff. Yep. You know, they don't think about that because it's that that thought process is like, you know, I go to the gym, but this time, you know, that's when all the pretty women there. Yep. You're just constantly looking. You're just looking. Because what you're looking at? You know thing? You're not just looking at them because they're pretty. Right, 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 right. Looking at. You know, right. what are you? Because what are the thoughts are consuming your mind while you're supposed to be in there working out? Yeah, you know, what I'm saying Up, uplifting your temple. What are you thinking about? Because yep. then now the thing about consistently thinking something, at some point you want to act it out. That's it. That's I'm glad you got you there because that's man? that's the point right there. Yep. You consistently think about something, you don't want to act it out. Yep. Because and, and, you think about it, you start speaking about it. You're like, man, boy, I saw this girl at the gym. Right. Boy, she was good, you know, and all this type of stuff. And so that's where it, that's why it's so detrimental. And so vital, you gotta kill mm-hmm. those thoughts. Yeah. So well, once those thoughts start replaying, it's the downhill spiral. Yeah, and the thing is, is you know, we're, uh, just like, so uh, we're to meditate on scripture, right? Um, simply deep thought and throughout the day, right? Not just a one time thing, right? Not just on Sunday, right? We we it's supposed to we supposed to do that. Why? Because we want that thought to become action in our heart. We want we want that that thought process, the consuming the word, right? We want it to get into our heart so that from the abundance of our heart overflows the word, right? Or whatever it is that we're consuming. So yes, that part right there. If we are if we are constantly consuming things. Now, we're talking about lust, but this can be anything. Let's say you're struggling with alcohol. Let's say you're struggling uh uh with cussing. Like you just uh, not necessarily cussing is just itself, but like uh just speaking foully about people or negative or whatever, right? If it's anything that you're constantly on replay over and over, it will start to. It, I, I kind of think of it like uh, sometimes you know, like doing the dishes or whatever. Uh, or if you've got like a cup full of one thing, you got a, a, another cup full of something else. If this if this cup is way bigger than this one, as you pour into it, whatever you had in there will eventually come out, and then whatever is left in there, right, is what you poured yourself into. And so I, I think that part of Guard your heart, right? Scripture talks about guard your heart. You want to guard your heart and guard your thoughts because they will turn into action. And 
no one can try to lie to themselves so much so that when they're finally doing it, that they go, oh my gosh, how did I get here? It's like, homie, you've been thinking about it all exactly. the time. Like, exactly. And so I also I also love the the comment to go back to what you said earlier. Uh, talk about with less specifically, um, is that most people and, and it's not just youth and it's not just men, right? Most people don't really understand the concept because they get told that like, nah, like you got to have a high body count, you got to test it out before you get married because it's awkward, yeah. homie. It should be awkward, but it's beautiful because you have the rest of your life to make it not awkward. Whatever awkward, yeah. whatever awkward is, right? Um, especially to a married couple. But there's so many people, and bro, and you said it, you you nailed it. There's so many people who don't really understand the fruit of waiting for one another, right? Being able to to be intimate uh, at, in a purest form. And when I say purest form, for those of you guys who are listening, it, listen. If you if you have if your if your story is like mine, where you are sexually active before marriage, okay, in any way, shape, or form. All right, I'm not gonna go. I'm not splitting hairs. I, I, any way, shape, or form. Even now, if you are deciding, if you feel like the Lord is talking to you right now, it's like, okay, you know what? You're talking to me. I really need to go ahead and stop this thing. Right there at the point of stop, from there on out until you get married, that can all be beautiful, right? That that moment of, of actually connecting with your spouse when that time comes, okay, whenever it may be, God can still uh, 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 bless that. Now, yes, the, those thoughts that Dior was talking about, you may not... Because sometimes we we paint it as like you know yeah and then when you're there you know with your with your wife you know for the first time you'll be thinking about everybody to be honest you may not be thinking about everybody else but here's here's when you will start thinking about everybody else when you and your spouse are not getting along that well when you two are financially struggling when there are some obstacles that are coming along the way let's say you have a child and now you got many months. Uh, uh, especially post more, more so post birth, that ain't nothing happening. That'll be the time that your brain will start going back to the past, and that's what people don't think about, bro. And so I love that you said that that they don't get it. Now, how now how how well, how can somebody how else can somebody convey? Because I I want to sit on this on this topic a little yeah. bit, bro. Uh, how else can somebody convey other than you know, hey, uh, save your sex, for, uh, save yourself, uh, sex for marriage uh, before marriage, uh, uh, or for marriage. I'm sorry, uh, so that you can be united that way, uh, so that you're not comparing. Uh, those are the typical things. How else can somebody benefit from that? Um, I mean, simply just from the like entertaining standpoint or the talking standpoint. Like before any other extracurricular activities, just entertaining women that bring no value in life or women entertaining men that bring no value in life, no substance more than the physical mm. is a, um, a waste of energy. And, you know, I saw, I told somebody the other day, or uh, I think we talked about it maybe some months ago. And I was like, men, especially if, if half of men, you know, or the high majority of men would take the time to stop focusing on how to pursue a woman mm -hmm. and pursue their dreams and be a lot more successful men out here. <laughs> because what guys have to understand, what guys specifically have to understand that half the time you are her being multiple men for multiple different women to appease them, to make sure you keep their attention, mm -hmm. make sure they stay interested and make sure you're keeping them happy. Mm. Because a lot of times, you know, they saying, you know, the more women you got, you know, what I'm saying, oh, you the man. You like, how, how many girls you got on the roster? But mm. at the end of the day, that like anybody I've ever sat down with, you know, what I'm saying that's you know been out there and had multiple, you know, what I'm saying was playing the field all the time, mm -hmm. and finally got in a true, a genuine relationship. Will always say they would choose that genuine relationship over having all the options. Amen. Because as, as human beings, just how we were naturally created, how God created us, we desire to be in a relationship and be loved by somebody. You yeah. know what I'm saying? No one desires to be trying to figure out who loves them, who wants to be with them. Nobody desires that. Right, right. Yeah. In, in a perfect world, 
I, most people would probably be able to want to be able to, at some point in life, it's like, okay, I'm ready to get married, walk out their front door, find their husband or their wife, go about their life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like in a perfect world, in a perfect right. world. And you know what I'm saying? Anybody says, no, I don't want that, dog, no, you, you're tripping. You lie. You, you like, lie. And so it's just like that concept, all the energy, the time, the money, all that type of stuff. Yeah. What you're doing to appease all these people that at the end of the day are not bringing any value, any substance. And you're not going to be spending any time with long term. It's another episode of wasted time. Yeah. And uh, that's the thing. And, you know, what comes with, and what really put me on a new perspective is, um, like, especially with moving out, is, like, you know, thinking about all, you, we talk about all what a man's supposed to bring to the table. Yeah. You know? And, like, everything a man's supposed to have to present. And, you know, I've always, I've always believed that's how I was raised that any man that wants to get married or be in a relationship should be in a position to provide. You know what I'm saying? He should be capable of doing that or he should have something to bring a wife home to. You yeah. know, yeah. I, I've always I've always believed that. He should be capable of doing that and being a leader. You know? Yeah, well, you know, and uh I I I agree with you. Um I, I would add I would add to it uh, because only because I know other people's stories as well. Um, God could still construct if you're looking for a relationship. God can still uh, uh, construct a relationship in such a way that um, maybe as a man, maybe you don't have your feet on solid ground. Okay, in yeah. terms of finances or you know a place or whatever. However. Any any person, male or female, can look at another person and go, you know what? I don't mind risking it because their work ethic is different. Their mm-hmm. character is different, right? Mm-hmm. They're not like it's it's one thing. It's one thing to have somebody who just is not in a good spot, but they are <laughs> constantly grinding and finding different ways to to utilize their time, right? That's exactly. that's totally different. Than somebody who's just like, man, you know, I'm just trying to live it up, man. I'm just trying to have fun, you know. Uh, you know, I'm I'm in my twenties. I can have a good time, and it, that's a whole different conversation there too. Because don't waste yeah. your twenties. Yes, enjoy yourself, but guess what? Work hard now, right? Right. Risk Work hard play. now, so that later on, you get to play. Yeah. Right? And this is like this is one big point, like with this whole topic, and I know we're getting close to time. One big yeah. point I want yeah. to hit. Um, is as men, we have learned to value ourselves off of what we have mm. and what we've accomplished, and not simply based off of who we are. Yeah. And that's because we've heard every other thing was told us to be good men. You know, men don't cry. Men gotta be strong all the time. Man, you gotta have this, you gotta have this, you gotta have that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You're not making the most money, you're not man enough. If he made more money than you, he's more of a man than you. He, you know, he benched more than you, he's more of a man than you. He's yeah. better athlete, he's more of a man. All these things have been told to us, and men have forgot how to look in the mirror and value themselves. Like, I'm, I'm a man of value. That's I'm it. a man of integrity. You That's know what it. I'm saying? People can come to me and I can give them the honest truth. I don't lie to people. Yes. People can look at me as reliable. You know, yes. so I'm a hard worker. Regardless of where your status is, you know what I'm saying? Regardless of where you are financially, regardless of whether or not you live in your parents' crib, all that type of stuff. And then when you sit there and look at that, you will see a lot of these women are not bringing anything to the table to be even deserving of being considered a wife. Mm. And that's the thing is a lot of men don't look at value beyond how she look. Mm-hmm. You know? And the thing is, that is a very key factor is because her good looks is not going to raise no kids. Her good oh, looks yeah. is not gonna keep yeah. her true when y'all are having financial struggles or y'all are having an argument. Yep. You know yep. what I'm saying? Her good yep. looks are not gonna challenge you to be a better man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Her mentality and her worth ethic and her passion and her drive and what she wants to accomplish with you alongside you or individually right. is what's gonna challenge you to become better. And yeah. I always say like, especially in my generation now, when it comes to dating, a lot of these women and girls have dealt with project men men that like didn't want to do anything, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And they sit there and had one of the worst, like, I can fix them, I can change them. And then they get the man that 
they don't have to change. They don't have to fix. And he challenges them to recognize the things they never had to recognize because they was the one always doing all the project fixing. Yeah, yeah. And you get in this 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 boat where like women are not used to that, and so it's like it's so much in there. It's yeah. so much formal. So many people hurt people, hurting people, right. and people would sit down and just recognize where their flaws are, where they truly stand. You know, recognize that. I don't want to be just out here chasing women or I don't want to just be out here having all these men give me attention, you yeah. know, but that they truly want to be in a real relationship and let God ordain that, then it would be so much easier. But, you know, people aren't patient. We want everything instantaneous. We want everything <laughs> how we do it. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and, and so, um, you know, I, I know you're talking from that perspective of uh, a, a man chasing after a woman who is not really bringing value um, and at the same, on the same side, um, uh, as a, as a man, you need to also have value. You, you have to be bringing something to the table and it's not always finances, right? It's not always finances. It's not always a career. Uh, but there has to be other attributes. And this is where it still goes back to, if you are laying your life before the Lord and trying to live it in a way that brings glory to him that you are trying to abide by his word you're already doing more than enough than other men uh who may yeah. not know the lord right uh, right. uh it's uh i mean angie rose she just she just posted uh, she just posted this and and i've heard it many times but uh essentially is um uh be the man that attracts uh, the woman who wants to submit. Okay. She didn't, it didn't say it that way, but we you know when we're talking yeah. about submission or whatever. Um, you know, uh, before people get tripped up on that word, I'm not, I'm not here to have that conversation right now, but, uh, you know, we'll, we as a man, uh, as men will, will want somebody to quote unquote, uh, be a submissive wife. Okay. But you're not being the man that she feels confident in that she could submit any authority to, <laughs> Because you've not shown any ways, right, of doing that. And so I, I think all of that is definitely important. Um, I, I love what Jeffrey said in the chat uh, as well, where, he's uh, where he talked about sometimes you got to unfollow close friends because uh, the IG photos be triggering, right? And they'd be leading you to, to look up, uh, you know, similar girls, stuff like that. And then uh, uh, got to be ruthless, uh, taking every thought captive. Like, that's the thing. Like, we can't play around with it. And, and, and shout out to the Holy Spirit. Shout out to the Holy Spirit, not only convicting us of certain things, right? We're talking about lust right now, but not only convicting us, but shout out to the Holy Spirit who talks to somebody else and go, and then they hit you up and be like, mm -hmm. hey, dog, you doing okay? And then yeah. you have the responsibility to be transparent. Like, you got to be vulnerable and be like, you know what? This person just hit me up out of nowhere. God, I see you. You... Yeah. You you know I'm trying to ignore you, but but you not playing with me, right? Exactly. So yeah, that's that's good, bro. That's good, man. I love that. I love that. So I know, uh, uh, man. I know we we kind of with technical this. We only got like two topics, bro. But man, I love I love your heart. I love your passion. I would definitely want to uh, be able to talk more about it, man. But uh, I do want to uh, move into our Oxygen Brand Spotlight portion of the show, uh, where we get a chance to hear live from the artist about their song. Uh, and just kind of uh, tell us about the song uh, "Winter Soldier," right? Am I correct? Uh, Winter Soldier. Uh, tell us, uh, tell us the heart uh, behind it, and and uh, just your hopes for that as well. Um. So this song, I kind of wrote this song. Uh, I didn't have a, like I said, a background. I didn't have a lot of trauma growing up. Um, like most things I dealt with, I said I have a lot of trauma. I dealt with like a lot of racism growing up as yeah. a kid, um, living in Southern Arkansas, um, in all shapes and fashion and form. So like, you know, that kind of shaped me into how I dealt with people. Yeah. Um, but as far as like, you know, some of the worst events in my life was, you know, like my cousin died, my grandpa died when I was in ninth grade. Um, and it was like people like, you know, I was really close with, um, but I almost lost my dad at the beginning of this year. Mm. Um, he ended up having an wow. ulcer ripped in his intestines, um, probably mid March, um, and he lost like fifty units of blood. Was in a coma for about a week and a half. Wow. Um, you know, I never, 
he's always, you know, he's always Superman, you know? Yep, yep. You never, you know, you never wake up 23 years old and thinking that, you know, you might have to bury your dad. Um, wow. So, like, just kind of, it kind of tore me up to the point, I, I haven't probably never been that broken in my life. Um, you know, I could just like, you know, I could be in there, couldn't really be in there, couldn't really look at them. Yeah. And I just wanted to go home and cry every night, you know? And so, uh, one night I went and, uh, um, when he's kind of on the verge of trying to wake back up, went and wrote Winter Soldier. Yeah. Um, and kind of a couple songs here recently, just kind of all been just like, I have to be, you know, the man God has called me to be because my parents have sacrificed so much to raise me to be that. Right, um, right. And I was like, you know, it'd be a dishonor to them and a dishonor to myself and a dishonor to God if I didn't accomplish that. Yeah. Regardless of what anybody's ever told me. Um, so like the Winter Soldiers, like even in the coldest times, even in the darkest times, you know, I'm, I'm still doing what I got to do, you know? And it's yeah. like, it was like, really, I was just talking that talk to anybody that ever doubted me. Anytime a demon tried to stop me, yeah, anytime yeah. try to use somebody, I was like, you tried and I'm still here. And I said, we still putting people on the name of Jesus. We still putting them on who God is and what God can do in their life. Right. And it ain't no stopping us. We still going. Hey. So, uh, kind of where the song came from. That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you guys know what it is. It is time for the Oxen Brand Spotlight music. Make sure you guys let him know uh, how you guys feel about it. Let's run it. Hey, let's go. Yes, let's go. That's good, bro. That's good, man. I uh uh I, I like I like that humble and then you said handsome right after that. <laughs> so it's just yeah. like, <laughs> so, hey, I'm humble and I'm handsome and that's still speaking facts. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you, sir. Yes, sir. Nah, that's good, bro. And then yeah, uh 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 again, bro, the video edits and all that was actually real clean, bro. Yeah, no, my guy Ozzy shot that, man. He turned it around in like three days, man. Got it back to me. Sheesh. It was crazy. Sheesh. That was that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah. Chat letting you know uh, it was fire, bro. Yeah, sheesh, man. Sheesh. And um, uh, remind me, remind me, where are you out of again? Uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's right. That's right. Rama, Rama. Ah, come on, bro. Come on, bro. We gonna we gotta we gotta have you come over to St. Louis and do a show, bro. Uh, hey man, I got some people out there. They're trying to get me come out there too. So yeah. ain't, ain't even that far, man. It's not. It's, 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 throw. it's it's not, bro. It's not. I I do six and a half hours back and forth to Michigan so many times, bro. And that's the same distance, if not a little less, from Tulsa. Yeah, so for real. yeah, I get that. I get that. Uh, man, that's dope, bro. Well, hey, listen, man. Um, thank you so much again for being back on the show. Again, I can definitely. Thank you for having me. I, I enjoyed the conversation. I could definitely tell that you uh, I, actually I already know because of your content. So hey, make sure everybody's following them on social medias. Of course, you guys have been seeing the links in the chat as well. But um, uh, I, I can tell by your content that you really like to talk about relationships a whole lot, um, and that you have a very uh, specific mindset about that. Um, uh, is there a, is there I don't know. Like, are you are is there any plans with those kind of conversations are you doing any kind of like video form podcast of that stuff or or just is that just something that's just always on your heart uh i would love to get a more like table talk about those things yeah because i feel like there's so many misconceptions um yep. when it comes to those things and i feel like like if it needs to be a platform opportunity for men really to be vulnerable to another level um, about how they feel about those certain things. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, and vulnerability is not just see a boohoo crying I'm sad. It is like <laughs> telling them like your unadulterated truth about how this really makes you feel. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's a side, like, you know, that would really put in perspective for a lot of people. Um, Cause regardless of what anybody says, like how a man approaches or handles a relationship really dictates how it goes or the course of action. Yep. Um, and, you know, because it's biblical, you know, um, that's just how it is. So men as a whole really need to step up and be able to step up mm. um, and do that. So it's a two twofold thing to that because we are supposed to treat women with that proper right value um, and respect them as such. But at the same time, we can't 
be out here forfeiting our value for women that don't deserve it. Um, yeah. So it's like people got we got to change the game. We got to change where the devil's taking bad. He's made relationships look like you know they're they're confusing and you know they're dog water and like you know everybody's like it's just better just to you know live together and not get married. Right. Or it's right. Just to have you know just keep a couple people on the line and just have a rotation. Where God is meant for you to be in matrimony and lock in that that marriage covenant with somebody that He's created for you. Yeah, uh, it's the most beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, and it's all it's always funny when people uh, start talking stuff like that uh, too, because I'm like, man, you know, statistically that doesn't e- that doesn't even help the the yeah the uh, shacking up before. Uh, yeah. you know, before you get married and all that, the trying to like keep your options open, like all, all the stuff that you just talked about, all the stuff that, uh, people hype up. It's just like, you know what? Literally there, there are, there's actual factual data, right? There's actual data that does not support your claim. In fact, it supports the claim of what scripture, uh, talks about and how, how to go about it, bro. So, uh, I, yeah, I agree on that aspect. And, uh, and, and again, it's, it's, um, uh, I, I know you're using the the wording uh, deserving, deserving, uh, but it's it's it, it all starts with the same thing that you find out if you find your identity in Christ, right? If you find your identity in Christ, and you see your imago dei, you you understand how you're made in the image of God. Um, everything else, kind of after that, just starts to kind of fall in place after that. Like I mean, you know, the, the, say. Satan wanted to go after identity very quickly, right? He he wanted to in the garden be like, are you, you know, God's trying to withhold this from you, okay? Uh, he he technically uh, has more and uh, just doesn't want to share with you, and so it's like questioning the identity of uh, who we are and, and how God made us to be and all that, and so yeah, it just it just it just snowballs after that, bro. So. Uh, yeah. But that's good, bro. I, I love I love your passion on it. Uh, I love that uh, your your youth, your youthful zeal, um, is able to to be used as well to connect with that. Because of course, uh, you know I'm actually I'm getting up in age too, where where not everybody's going to look at me and want to have those conversations. But I will say, uh, nine times out of ten, bro, anytime I get a chance to speak. Um, and I ask, you know, hey, what do you guys want me to talk about? Whatever. Relationships are almost like the number one yeah. thing that everybody want to talk about. You know, um, and and I and a difficult thing to deal with, especially in today's time. Yeah, you know, it's really all of it. Yeah, yeah, I I agree, I agree. Um, uh, uh, sorry, I'm reading Jeffrey's. Uh, maybe come to SDL, do a live podcast uh, with the audience, and then follow up with a music show. Yeah, God, yeah. Yeah, do the whole thing, bro. Do the whole thing. That's for sure. Uh, that's that's what I want to do more of. I want to do more. Um, uh, like panel discussion type stuff or whatever. Like, honestly, bro, like I don't, and, and I, yes, it is being a DJ too, but I, I'm like, man, I really don't want to do concerts. I, I, I don't mind it, of course, whatever. Right. But of course, if you're used to being on the backstage side of things or whatever, um, I enjoy the conversations, uh, yeah. you know, more than anything else, but it's, uh, it's those moments of being able to have panel discussions or having those conversations or whatever. And so, yeah, I agree. Those things are fun too. So, like I said, I want to be an influencer first. I want to be able to speak, chop it up, yeah. um, and inspire people. You know, before the music or anything else. Well, and and I love that because then people will be able to actually connect with Temple Dior, the artists, right? They'll they'll get to know your heart, and of course, by knowing your heart, uh, will then go and listen. Because because bro, so uh, one artist I'm thinking of here in St. Louis, uh, so Thizzle. All right, Thizzle. I I, I enjoy. My my personality is not that aggressive, uh, uh, but I almost always and I, I got a I got a buddy of mine, Paul. Uh, every time we ever gone to a show, a Thizzle show, we're like, yo, after hearing him talk and his heart and everything else, like we just want to buy up every single record he ever, he ever puts out. But it's because we get to know his heart, right? We get to hear it and we get to feel it in a different way. Where it's just like, man. It's uh, it's it's different, man. It's different. So, um, and then yeah, and by doing shows like that where you get to do it, it uh, like Jeffrey says, it makes you stand out, be a little different too. So, but hey, uh, I, we're rambling, and my son's like, hey, come on now, you told me it was an hour, okay? So, 
<laughs> so uh, yeah. I'm going to hop off and let you go, bro. But uh, again, thank you for being on the show. I know it won't be the last time, especially this. Like, I might have to, we might actually have to run uh, run back uh, um, uh, on our YouTube uh, uh, our, our podcast there because that's, that's, that's where I want to have these type of conversations, right? I, obviously, limited time here. It's a little bit later in the evening, too. But um, that's where I want to get in different conversations. I want to have different kind of people and different mindsets and all that. So I would, I'd love to be able to run those conversations back and, and um, apply actual scripture, right? Like, the, like we're not, we don't want to just tell you, tell you the audience, you know, hey, don't do this, do that. It's, it's literally more so, um, you know, that, hey, uh, scripture, here's where scripture helps us process this stuff as well. So. But uh, but all right, bro. Uh, well, hey, uh, you got you got anything else coming up soon? Uh, we got a single called Gate Code dropping okay. August eighteenth. Uh, oh, so y'all dope. better look out for that. So we're gonna be dropping one to two singles a month for the rest of the year. Oh, let's go, let's go. Yes, this, this boy right. cooking. This Man, boy cooking. Hot grease, hot grease. <laughs> he said hot grease. I love it, bro. I love it. All right, bro. Well, hey, I'm gonna let you bounce, and uh, man, we'll definitely catch up, bro. Most definitely. I appreciate y'all for having me. Yes, sir. All right. Peace. Peace. Hey, if you liked any of this content and you found some value in it, make sure that you like, subscribe, and of course, share it. Also, if you're interested in some more, go ahead and check out these videos. Till next time, grace and peace. Adios. Adios.